Hello, my name's Mick Child, Director of Forge Photography Limited, and today we're looking at your AV settings. Today's a perfect day really for uh, using semi-automatic modes like TV or like AV and of course today we're going to use AV or A as it is on some cameras. Canon is AV, most other cameras are A and that's aperture priority. Aperture, if you remember from the last lesson, is how large the hole is within your lens. So we actually are going to set today um, different size apertures and then we're going to have a look at how depth of field is affected. So why is it good to use a semi-manual mode on a day like today? Well, today we've got a lot of broken, fluffy clouds in the sky, which is absolutely beautiful for being out in the garden. But it's not great for a photographer because what we're getting is one minute we've got bright light and the next minute it goes dark because the sun goes behind a cloud and then it's dark. So we're absolutely fighting to get the settings on the camera, especially if we're in full manual mode um, in the right place. So by shooting semi-manual, um, we can actually assign certain functions to the camera automatically, or at least the camera does that. So the broken cloud doesn't present us as stills photographers with so much of a problem, but for poor old George who's filming this for us today, um, he has to fight with the iris on the camera and various other settings um, while he's filming us to make sure that he keeps a fairly steady exposure all the way through the shot, so he has to use spotlights and that kind of thing. We're just going to use natural light today. So there's a couple of things that you need to set up on your camera if you remember. ISO, ISO is one of them. Remember, the ISO button on a Canon is on the top. If you're using a different type of camera, then you need to just sort of consult your manual and see where the ISO setting is. We want to set ISO to auto today. Um, it, just gives the, it, it just gives you an advantage because the camera will then set the perfect uh, sensor sensitivity with enough power on the sensor to get the shot that we need today. Um, the second thing that you need to set up is AV, or A as it is on some cameras. That's the aperture setting so that we can actually control how wide or, or small our aperture is. What I want you to do is I want you to set and most cameras, to, when you're in the semi-manual mode, will use this dial on the top to dial in the aperture. I want you to dial in f-stop 5.6, so it'll say 5.6 on the top, okay? Now, what the camera is going to do, and this is where the advantage comes, because the light's changing very quickly, the camera is going to be automatically sorting out how fast the shutter speed needs to be based on what aperture we've set. And with the auto ISO, that's giving it a, an extra help. So I've got some flowers over here that I'm going to take some pictures of. I think they're snowdrops. I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a great gardener, but it is my garden because we're on lockdown. Um, and we're going to take a couple of shots of these flowers. So I want you to do a similar thing in your garden when you've watched this, where we'll change the aperture to get uh, the background. OK, so I'm going to take a shot of these snowdrops. Make sure when you do take a shot that you focus nicely on the image. Okay, so I've got my spot right in the middle for the focus, and what that gives me is a formal composition of these. Now remember, we're shooting 5.6, f-stop 5.6, and that's a wide aperture, that's a large hole in my lens. So what that's doing, that's giving me a shallow depth of field. Just have a look at the photo I've taken here, and you'll see the tent in the background there is very, very fussy. In fact, you can't tell that's a tent. Um, so what we're going to do now, let's try it a different way. Let's dial in f-stop 13, okay? So let's try f-stop 13 and take that shot again. Okay, that's good. We'll do a couple of shots again. A formal composition. In other words, the subject is dead center of my picture. It's a symmetrical shape, if you like, and that's what we call a formal composition. Okay, so this time, if you have a look at the picture, you'll see that the tent is in focus. So by actually reducing the size of the aperture or increasing the f-stop, okay, the focal stop, what we've been able to do is increase the depth of field of our image. So you can see there's two ways of getting that image there. Okay, let's take one more. Always good just to get one more shot in. Great, love it, I love it. You're gonna, I really like that shot. Okay, so I'm gonna let you know about a little trick that I use sometimes. In fact, a lot of photographers use this, and it's to do with leading lines. 
And a leading line is something that you use to take you all the way to your subject. I've set something up over here just to show you what I mean. So what I've set up over here is some garden furniture and I've set it up such that it's a leading line into what is going to be my subject which is the apple tree over here. Okay so with the subject as our apple tree let's have a look so we're on f stop 13 what we need to do is because we're using this as a leading line running in we need to make sure that the apple tree is the bit that's in focus here okay that's nice and focused so f stop 13 there we go let's try this great stuff okay let's have a look at the photo ah yes i'm quite pleased with that so what we've got because we've used a, a small aperture a rather large number if you remember focal stop number being quite high as 13 what we've got we've got quite a lot in focus so you can see the chairs are in focus and the tree our subject is totally in focus okay so let's wind this down now to f stop 5.6 yep okay f stop 5.6 and what i'm hoping this time is that the chairs will be slightly out of focus so the foreground and the background but the chairs will still be leading us in to our subject which is the apple tree so let's focus on the apple tree that's great great stuff okay let's have a look at that yes as you can see the the foreground and the background are both slightly fuzzy if you like slightly out of focus but our subject is still fully in focus so i'm now going to walk over here because uh, one of the great things about Isabel um, being locked down at the moment and off school is that she's getting lots and lots of exercise. And she's actually put some gym mats out over here. So I'm gonna wander over to those gym mats um, and I'm gonna show you some different types of leading lines. Okay, let's go over to the gym mat. Okay, so as you can see, we've got a large gym mat and then we've got a smaller gym mat. And at the end of that gym mat, we've got a Tonka toy that I put down there. Now I think what we're going to do this time is we're going to make um, a formal composition, okay? And we're going to do this in portrait. So portrait is this direction and landscape is that direction, okay? So we've got f5.6. That's a large aperture, remember, f5.6, okay? Small number, large hole, <laughs> okay? Right, so making sure that I focus on the Tonka toy. Let's take a couple of shots. Yep, great, let's have a look at those. Yeah, great stuff. As you can see, the foreground and the background, again, are out of focus, as we want them to be. But our subject, the Tonka toy, is totally in focus, okay? Remember, this is a formal composition. Okay, let's change this then to focal stop 13, F stop 13, okay? And let's take another shot. Remember, focusing on the Tonka toy, that's really important. Okay, there we go. Lovely, let's have a look and see what we got. Perfect, now you can see that the foreground and the background are all in focus along with the Tonka toy. But it's important, of course, that we focused on the Tonka toy because the foreground and the background aren't perfectly focused, but we want the subject to be. As you can see, these gym mats are acting as a leading line into our Tonka toy, which is our subject, which is really good. Um, all right, it's not the most interesting of subjects, but hopefully it gives you an idea about how leading lines work. Okay, well, I think we've done about enough photography for one day. Let's go and have a look at the emails over here and, uh, and see what we've got. Okay, let's put the camera down for a minute and we'll have a look and see what emails we've got. Yeah. <laughs> my, uh, my knees are quite wet and dirty. It's quite a dirty old job, this. Okay, so what emails have we got? We'll take one from at random here. Okay, Isabel Wright. Hi, Isabel, hope you're watching today. Um, what do you say? Mick, thank you for the tutorial. I have a Sony camera. How do I set the ISO? Well, Isabel, thanks for the question. Um, and it's quite an important one, really, that, because we use Canon. Um, we use Canon uh, DSLRs and we use Canon video cameras. Um, and we're quite conversant with how those work. So I'm pretty confident that I know where all the controls are on those Canon cameras. However, when we're at the club at both Rushmore and St Andrews schools, the children do bring cameras to me and say you know can you help me with these settings so what we have to do we have to get the manual we have to go online perhaps normally because they don't have the manual with them and actually have a look and work out how that camera works uh, you know you just can't be an expert in how the operation of every camera 
like I say, there's a crossover, you know, the, the, the basic principles of photography are pretty much the same, um, or they are the same for all cameras, but how you get to those settings um, is, is slightly different in every case. Thanks very much for your email, Isabel. I mean, that's a really good point to make, and hopefully, uh, you know, everybody watching this can go away, and if there's anything they don't understand with the operation of their own camera, they can actually work out how that works. Okay, that's about as much as we can do today. Um, hopefully, you've enjoyed um, watching how I've set different focal lengths. Hopefully, you've seen that with changing light, you know, with um, the clouds, the fluffy clouds and the sun going in and out behind them, um, you know, using a semi-manual mode actually gives you an advantage over being in manual because you haven't got so many controls to think of. So you've actually got quite a lot of control um, over what you're doing. Yeah, it gives you more time to kind of compose the picture and everything else. And hopefully you've learned a little bit of a trick about sort of things going from left to right, um, makes quite a nice picture and kind of those leading lines, which are, are really good. Okay, so next time we're going to talk about uh, shutter speed. Okay, we're gonna be looking at the TV or S mode, which is the one that controls shutter, very much like AV. Um, but in reverse. So what we'll be doing is we'll be setting the shutter speed and I'll be talking to you about the type of shutter speeds that we might want to use for different scenarios. Um, but your camera in that mode will be controlling the apertures. You'll, you'll, you'll have no control, particularly in the depth of field that you have because the camera will set that automatically for you. Okay, well, I hope you've enjoyed it. And um, don't forget, Forge Photography Lessons at gmail.com, Forge Photography Lessons at gmail com don't forget to subscribe ring the bell drop me an email tell us what you think it's really useful helps us with the next lesson okay <laughs> we'll see you later bye for now